My name is Vicky and today we are going to be practicing a gentle flow to open out the hips. You may find that you would like to use a block or a bolster, um, cushions as well, they will be absolutely fine. And you just need to be mindful of any hip injuries that you may have or also into the knees. We will be coming into some deep stretches and deep positions that will work through the knee joint as well, but I will give you alternative options for you. So we're going to start by centering ourselves and grounding into our practice for today. So come to a seated position. You can sit on a block or a bolster to help lengthen out through the spine. Begin to draw the shoulder blades back down the spine. Allow the hands to rest softly on the knees. Begin to close the eyes and we start taking in some deep breaths. The beginning of our practice is the part where we start to center ourselves. We start to eliminate any thoughts that are outside of the room. We begin to let go. We start to focus on what space that we can hold within ourselves, both mentally and physically. We start to take notice of any sensations that arise, any stress that we are feeling. We start to notice if we are perhaps a little bit unbalanced. Perhaps we just need to center ourselves and feel a sense of grounding down through the sitting bones. The earth beneath us providing that energy, traveling up through the spine to the crown of the head. As you're taking your breath in, try and keep the shoulders down and away from the ears. And softly start to open the eyes. Let's slowly bring those knees in towards the chest for a moment. We're going to come and lie down on our mat. So softly lower yourself down. Make sure you see you have enough space behind you. Begin to draw those knees in towards the chest. You may wish to rock from side to side. And we're then going to cross one leg over the other. Now just take notice as to which one has come on top. So for me, my habitual way is to bring my left leg over my right. You might have done the opposite way, but that's absolutely fine. Just take notice of which leg is on the top. Start to grab hold of the feet and gently bring those knees in a little bit closer. Try and ensure that your spine is making full contact with the mat so you're not lifting up through the hips. Slowly release the feet from the hands and switch legs. And this I may feel a little bit strange. It might not feel as natural to you, but it's always good just to practice on the other side as well so that we create this sense of balance. And then slowly release, bringing the soles of the feet to the mat. 
and then gently open out the knees. Allow the weight of the knees to open out those hips. Coming into our Supta Baddha Konasana, our butterfly pose. Now you also may find that you want to place some extra support underneath the knees if you wish to rest them there if it's a little bit much to the hips. We're then going to take the hands all the way up and over just to stretch through the torso. Taking in some deep breaths just to lengthen that spine. And as you exhale, just notice the position of the mouth, the lips together or are they separated? Just really relax the jaw so you're not holding any tension there. The shoulders are still away from the ears so that the neck is nice and long. And slowly Release, bringing both knees back in towards the chest. We're then going to take hold of the right shin. So interlace the fingers around the right leg and then start to extend your left leg down the mat. You can allow that left leg to rotate out to the side. And then softly start to bring that right knee across the body. Now you can go as far as you need as if there's a little twist through the spine. So you have options here to allow the hands to face up towards the sky. You can leave them resting onto the torso. You might find you want to stack the knees or perhaps place a bolster or a rolled up blanket underneath the knee for a little bit of extra support if perhaps drawing that knee towards the mat is a little bit too much. Now when I refer to your drishti, that is your gaze, that can go up towards the sky or you may wish to look towards the opposite shoulder. Wherever you are, just take your right hand and place it onto your back for a moment and just feel your spine here and notice at which point it is that you are having that twist and creating that little extension and stretch through the back. Slowly start to bring the right knee in and then the left knee comes to join. Take hold of the left shin, extend the right leg, draw the left knee in. And then slowly bring the left knee all the way across if you wish. Remembering that you can place it onto a block or support. If you have space, you may wish to extend the arms out to the side or you may be like me and perhaps haven't got quite the space here. So you may wish to bring your hands to your side. Again, you may wish just to run your left hand this time down your spine, noticing at which point it is that you are feeling that twist. Slowly coming back to center, hug both knees in and start rocking forwards and backwards along the spine to slowly come and sit all the way up. Crossing the legs in front of you, drawing the shoulders back and down the spine again, let the hands rest on the knees. And so we now just start to settle in a little bit, grounding into those hips. We're going to take hold of our left leg. So you're going to release the foot from underneath you. You're going to take hold of your left foot with your right hand. Start to lift that foot off the mat. Now this is gonna work into the hip. We're going to just move that leg from side to side. You may wish to bring your knee in towards the crease of your elbow and move the leg again from side to side. If you can go a little bit further, Bring the sole of the foot to the crease of the right elbow. Hold the shin with your right hand and then your left arm can wrap around. So you're kind of as if you're cradling a baby. Just gently working from side to side. 
So wherever you are, whether you're holding the foot, whether you're holding the leg, just ensure you're keeping that spine nice and long. And then we're going to take hold of our big toe with our two piece fingers with the right hand. Place your left hand onto the mat and slowly extend that leg forwards. Now you may wish to keep a bend in the knee or charge that foot that little bit further forward to stretch through the back of the leg. If you're wanting to take it a little bit further, you can start to look behind you, perhaps extending your left arm a bit further down the mat or starting to lift your left arm up as well. And then slowly bending that left knee again, taking hold of the foot or the leg and rock from side to side. And then slowly release, placing the foot down. We switch to the other side. Now, as I said, it's really important just to be mindful of your body and notice which part of the body you're feeling tension the most. If you have any injuries at all, you may find that you don't want to extend or create as much of um, a crease into the hip. You may just wish to keep the leg quite low down and just gently rock from side to side. So find that position that is right for you. You might also find one side easier than the other. Today for me, my right hip for some reason is feeling a little bit tighter. So feeling this stretch that little bit more. But just make sure you're breathing and your exhale is releasing that tension. And then slowly release. Take hold of your big toe with your left fingers. Place your right hand beside you. Start to extend that leg forwards. Again, looking behind you, option to lift that right arm. As I say, you can keep a slight bend in that knee. We are just starting off today, so you're not expecting you to completely straighten your leg. And then slowly come back to center, taking hold of that foot again, or the leg, gently rocking from side to side. And then slowly placing the foot down. So you have another option, you can cross the legs here or you can come into a half lotus or a full lotus. So you might find that you want to place your left foot on top of your right thigh or vice versa or both, it's entirely up to you. We're going to lengthen up the spine, extend the arms up towards the sky. Take a deep nourishing breath in. And as you breathe out, you're going to twist the upper body. Now you're not going to twist through the hips. You're just twisting that upper body. As you twist, you're going to place the right hand behind you and your left hand is coming to the right thigh. Take a little gaze to the back shoulder. And then we lift those arms up again. Inhale, stretch. Lengthening the spine. We twist the other way again. Right hand coming to the thigh and taking your gaze to your left shoulder. And then lifting all the way up again. Taking that stretch, lengthening torso, still keeping those shoulders away from the ears. We're going to bring the arms around behind us. We're going to interlace the fingers and draw the shoulders again back down through the spine. Opening out the chest and the heart, gazing forwards. Take a deep breath in and as you breathe out, you're going to release the hands and slowly walk those hands forwards and soften the heart down to the mat. This is that, that opportunity where you can place a block or a bolster in front of you to rest on as we begin to stretch through the spine. Extend those arms that bit further forward now. 
come up onto the fingertips, lifting the palms off the earth. And then very slowly, walking those hands all the way back in, lengthen the spine, lift the arms all the way up. Inhale, stretch and exhale, release. We're going to switch legs. So if you have um, whichever leg in front of you crossed on the top, switch to the other side. We lift all the way up again, deep breath in. Exhale, we're twisting left arm across to right thigh. Gaze towards the right shoulder. Remembering we're not twisting through the hips, just the upper body, through the thoracic spine. Let's lift the arms up again. Inhale, stretch, exhale, twist. Inhale, lifting the arms up. Taking that deep breath in and exhale, release the arms down and then walk those fingertips forwards, softening the chest down to the mat. Just check in with your glutes that you're not lifting them up so that you're still rooting down through the sitting bones. And then very slowly walk those fingertips back in. We take a deep breath in, lifting the arms up, stretching the torso. Bring the hands through to heart center. Take a moment here. We're going to start to come up to standing. So let's place the hands down onto the mat. Come up onto your hands and knees. Release the feet. Make sure you have enough space in front and behind you. So come to center yourself on your mat. Wrists underneath the shoulders. We're going to take the feet at the width of your mat. And then we're going to tuck the toes under and come into a wide downward facing dog. So you start to lift the knees off the mat. Send the hips all the way back. Lengthen the spine. Pressing into the mat. Keeping those hips lifted. So you can pedal through the knees one at a time. I don't want to be here for too long, just a couple of breaths. And then slowly walk the hands towards the feet. Coming into a wide forward fold. And then slowly start to roll up, keeping the feet exactly where they are. The arms come out to the side. We lift all the way up and we bring the hands through to heart center. So now just heel toe those feet in, come to stand, draw the shoulders back and down, palms facing forwards. Engaging the core, tailbone is slightly tucked under, we're drawing in, we're sending the core in towards the back, so we're really drawing through our muller banda, our root lock. We're engaging through the thighs as well. Working into that pelvic floor, which is where the mulabanda, our root lock, is situated. Feel that connection with the earth. Feeling that stable foundation for your practice. Let's lift those arms straight up in front of you, gazing up towards the sky. Exhale, start to hinge forwards from the hips. Swan dive all the way down. Let's lift up to a halfway lift. So fingertips come to the shins, gazing forwards. I need to put my hair up in just a moment. Lengthening that spine, pushing those glutes back. Soften the knees, fold all the way forwards. Allow the chest to rest on the thighs. Inhale, roll back up again, deep breath in, connect with the mat, lift the arms up, stretching up and bring the hands back to heart center. Take a moment here, 
closing the eyes if you need to. Connecting with the mat. Let's lift the toes off the mat and then slowly ground them down back one at a time. Let's lift the arms back up again. Inhale, lift, and then exhale, hinge forwards. One dive down. Come up to your halfway lift, lengthen the spine, pushing the glutes back. Soften the knees, plant the hands down onto the mat and walk your hands forward, slowly coming into a high plank, engaging that core. And as you arrive in a high plank, drop down to your knees and untuck the toes. Keeping the elbows in, we're going to chaturanga lower down to the mat. Inhale through to a cobra sphinx or an upward facing dog. And then exhale as you push back into downward facing dog. Planting one foot down at a time, working into the back of those legs, bending and straightening the knees. Stepping your feet now to the width of your mat, coming back to that wide downward facing dog. Perhaps you might find this easier to get your heels to the mat as you arrive here. We're going to shift the weight forwards again. This time as you roll forwards, really come into that cat position. Arrive into your high plank, drop down to the knees, untuck the toes, chaturanga lower down, the elbows stay in. Inhale through to your cobra sphinx or upward facing dog. Lifting those hips and the knees off the mat and then send those hips all the way back into downward facing dog. Bringing the feet back together just so that they are hip distance apart, we lift the right leg. Thinking about those hips again, open out the hips, bend your right knee. Gaze underneath your right arm towards that, sorry, underneath your left arm towards that right foot. Gradually bring that right knee in. Rise up onto the left toes, gazing forwards, round that spine, step the foot through. You have an option to also bring your hands there to help you with that foot and where to place it. Just make sure knee is over ankle. Leading with the left arm, stretch forwards. Begin to turn and drop down to the left heel. Push through that right foot, arriving into your warrior two. Checking the alignment of the feet. The heel should be in line with the arch of the back foot. Reaching forwards, turn the palm over. Reversing your warrior all the way back. Gazing up towards the sky. And then arriving into your side angle, placing right arm onto right thigh, keeping the length through the spine, send the left arm up and over. Push through that right leg, come back to warrior two. Arriving into the side of your mat, turn onto the heel of the right foot and turn the right foot in. Adjust yourself slightly by bringing those feet in a little bit as we lift the arms up. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, come into goddess pose. Softening down into those hips. Rooting down here, keeping the chest lifted. Shoulder blades back and down. Just working into those hips. Maybe bringing the hands to the hips if you would like to. Let's charge all the way up, really activating through those sides. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, now turn towards your right foot. Turn the back foot as well. Keep your right leg straight and your back heel grounding into the mat. We're then going to reach forwards to come into our pyramid pose. Now this is where you may find you want a block either side of your right foot to help you. Send those hips back, gazing forwards. A 
and then soften the right knee, drop down onto the left knee, inhale, lift the arms up. Squeezing the thighs and the glutes, drawing in through the stomach. Stabilizing yourself here in this rise. Bringing now your hands down, framing your right foot, lift your back knee, step back into downward facing dog. Pedaling through those knees. And go on the other side, lifting the left leg. Three-legged dog, bend your left knee, gaze underneath your right arm. Look towards your left foot, just be careful not to hit any plants on the way. We then start to bring the left knee in, we rise up onto the right toes. Draw the knee in towards the chest, gaze forwards as you step the foot through. Coming into your low lunge, your Anjani Asana. We then lead with the right arm, swinging it forwards, really stretch, open out to warrior two. Arriving here and checking the alignment of the feet, drawing the shoulders again down, relaxing into your hips. Reach forwards, turn the palm, breathe out, reverse that. Right hand softly places on the right leg. And then we come into that side angle. Keeping that length through the spine, right arm comes up and over. This time we're just turning to face the front of the mat, reaching with that right hand, placing it down onto the mat. Bring your left hand down to join. Gazing forward, step back into downward facing dog. And take five deep breaths here in your downward facing dog. And so we're going to now start to lift your right leg, three-legged dog, draw the knee in, step the foot to the outside of the right hand, staying here for a moment, making sure knee is over ankle, and then step back to downward facing dog. Repeat on the left side, lift the left leg, step the foot to the outside of the left hand. Step all the way back. One more time on each side, lifting that right leg, send the foot to the outside, of the right hand. Step back, final round, lifting the left leg and stepping the foot outside of the left hand. Drop down to your right knee, untuck the toes, bring your right hand a little bit more centered. Le reach forwards with the left arm as you come into a full circle. Looking towards the back of the mat, you can bend your Right knee holding your right foot. And then slowly releasing the hand from the foot and come back to center. Step back into a high plank, bringing the feet together and then chaturanga, lower down. Inhale up to your cobra. Sphinx, upward facing dog. Exhale into downward facing dog. We're then going to lift the right leg and step the foot to the outside of the right hand. Drop down to your left knee, untuck the toes, leading with your right arm, swinging it all the way up and over, looking towards the back of the mat option to bend your left knee and grab hold of that foot with the right hand. And then releasing the hand from the foot when you're ready, placing the hand down in front of you. We're going to lift your back knee. Now this is why we're gonna come into a yogi squat, malasana. So you may want to use a block underneath you for this. 
you're going to step your left foot to the outside of the left hand and you're going to come into first of all your wide forward fold slowly start to ground and root down through the glutes as you bring them closer to the mat lift up the chest and the heart and bring the hands to the center now you can use a block here to rest on if that is easier for you or you can use a rolled up blanket place it underneath the heels if your heels are lifting off the mat we're going to place your right hand down onto the mat lift your left arm all the way up and take it round behind you you can then see about taking your right arm and looping it around your right leg and interlace those fingers and open out through your left shoulder releasing the hands placing them down in front of you let's stretch out through the hips for a moment send them high as you charge all the way up into a forward fold softly start to bring the hips all the way back down and then we're going to place the left hand onto the mat take your right arm all the way up and round grab hold of the hands if you can making that bind around the leg don't worry if you can't just go where you can releasing the hands back down to the mat charge those hips all the way up release with your exhale slowly heel toe those feet in to say that they are just about to, to touch slowly bend the knees come up onto the tiptoes finding your balance here for a moment you can try and keep the hands onto the mat as you're really grounding through your toes this time so your toes are really gripping to the mat making that connection that foundation for your balance when you feel ready to you can look about bringing the hands to heart center you can also see about extending them up towards the sky or resting your hands on blocks either side of you if you prefer wherever you are start to bring the hands around behind you and slowly come down to the mat crossing the legs in front so just begin just to close the eyes for a moment as we just soften down to end our practice for today you may wish to come and lie down if you wish to take a long shavasana or perhaps you wish just to stay here with me for a moment. Just notice how your body is now. Potentially the hips are feeling a little bit looser. Perhaps you've managed to get rid of any tension that was holding you into, into your spine, into the lower back. <coughs> Let's bring the hands to your heart center. We'll close the practice with Namaste. So thank you very much for joining me today for this short hip opener flow. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're feeling well and good. And so if you wish to continue your practice with me, don't forget to hit subscribe in order to be updated with any new flows that I will be posting soon. So thank you ever so much for joining and I'll look